1808, Joseph Louis Gay Lussac discovered a proportionality or relationship that exists between the pressure and temperature of gases. He discovered that at constant volume, the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature. Let's take a look at an example to see how this works. This box will represent an enclosed container filled with gases. What will happen if we add heat to the system? If heat is added, temperature will increase. As heat is added, the kinetic energy of gas particles will also increase. This causes the molecules to move faster, causing more collision to the walls of the containers. Since the volume of the container is said to be constant or fixed, as more particles collide to the walls of the container, the pressure within the container will increase. As you can see, increasing the temperature also increases the pressure within the container. If heat is removed from the system, the temperature within the molecules of gases will start to decrease. Decreasing the temperature decreases the kinetic energy possessed by gas particles and will cause them to move slower. This will cause lesser molecular collision to the walls of the container. And when this happens, pressure decreases. And again, the decrease in pressure is caused by the decrease of temperature. Therefore, generally speaking, as temperature increases, pressure increases. And as temperature decreases, pressure of gases decreases. Hence, the two variables are said to be directly proportional to one another. Gay-Lussac's law uses a formula that can be used in order to solve problems in relation to gases' pressure and temperature. The formula is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. In this formula, P1 and T1 represent the initial condition of the gas while P2 and T2 represent the final condition of the sample gas. Let's take a look at some examples where we can apply the said formula. Example number one. A gas has a pressure of 0 0.37 atmospheres at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure at 25 degrees Celsius? Step number one is to identify the given from the question. Based from the question, the initial pressure is 0 0.37 atmospheres, the initial temperature is 50 degrees Celsius, while the final temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. We are asked to identify what is the final pressure. Before substituting the given to the formula, it is a must that the temperatures must be converted into Kelvin first. And we do that by simply adding 273 to the temperatures. which will give us 323 Kelvin and 298 Kelvin. After converting the temperatures into Kelvin, we can now substitute them to the formula. Since we are looking for the P2, let's transfer this temperature to the other side of the equation. Since the given is in division, when we transfer it to the other side, it becomes multiplication. Therefore, our formula becomes 298 Kelvin multiplied to 0 0.37 atmospheres divided by Kelvin. And then we cancel the units of measurement, Kelvin, so that the final answer will have a unit of measurement, atmospheres. Solving for 298 times 0 0.37 divided by 323 will give us 0 0.34 atmospheres. Now let us see if our answer has a sense. Based from our question, the temperature decreased from 50 to 25 degrees Celsius. Since pressure and temperature is said to be directly proportional to one another, we can expect that the pressure should decrease. 
the initial pressure is 0 0.37 and our answer is 0 0.34, which is a lesser value compared to the initial temperature. A gas has a pressure of 699 millimeters of mercury at 40 degrees Celsius. What is the new temperature if the pressure is changed to 253 millimeters of mercury? To solve the problem, let's first do step number one, which is identifying the given. Based from our question, the initial pressure of the gas is at 699 millimeters of mercury at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. We are asked to identify what will be the new temperature if the pressure was changed to 253 millimeters of mercury. Again, before substituting the given to the formula, make sure that the temperature is converted into Kelvin first. And we do that by adding 273 to the given temperature. After converting the temperature into Kelvin, we can now substitute the given to our formula. Afterwards, let's cross multiply the given quantities. And then, in order for T2 to be left alone on this side of the equation, we transfer this quantity to the other side of the equation. Since the quantity is in multiplication, when we transfer it to the other side, it becomes division. Therefore, our formula is 253 millimeters of mercury multiplied to 313 Kelvin divided by 699 millimeters of mercury. Do not forget to cancel the units of measurements so that you will know what will be the unit of measurement for your final answer. Solving for the equation, we will get 113.29 Kelvin. Now again, let us see if our answer makes sense. Based from the question, the one that changed was the pressure, 699 decreased to 253 millimeters of mercury. Now, if the pressure decreased, our temperature should also decrease. From 313 Kelvin, it decreased to 113.29 Kelvin. For our last question, the question is, determine the initial pressure of a gas that was heated from 20.60 degrees Celsius to 37.05 degrees Celsius, which resulted to a pressure of 14.40 atmospheres. Let us first write the given based from the question. From the question, we have learned that the sample gas has an initial temperature of 20.60 degrees Celsius, and it was changed to 37.05 degrees Celsius, and the change in temperature caused the gas to have a pressure of 14.40 atmospheres. We are asked to identify what was the initial pressure of the said sample of gas. Again, I would like to remind you that before you transfer this given to the formula, make sure that the temperatures are written in Kelvin scale. This can be done by adding 273 to the given temperatures, which will give you the values of 293.6 Kelvin and 310.05 Kelvin. Afterwards, we can now proceed by substituting the given to our formula. Afterwards, to solve for the P1, we just need to transfer the 293 Kelvin to the other side of the equation. Since this is in division, when we transfer to the other side, it becomes multiplication. Therefore, our formula is to get P1, we just need to multiply 410 atmospheres to 293.6 Kelvin and then divide it to 310.05 Kelvin. We first cancel the units of measurement Kelvin in order to determine that our final answer should be in atmospheres. Solving for the given equation will give us 13.64 atmospheres. Afterwards, let's double check if our answer makes sense. Based from the question, the temperature increased 
from 20.60 degrees Celsius to 37.05 degrees Celsius. Since pressure and temperature are directly proportional, once the temperature increased, pressure should also increase. The initial pressure was 13.64 and it was increased to 14.40 atmospheres.